Okay, folks, so you know what time it is. It's Christmas time. Anyway, it's never too late to celebrate the life of Jesus and his birth. And so today, I'm going to take full advantage of the fact that I've been commissioned to carve a baby Jesus in a historically accurate manger. So I hope you enjoy the process of this little guy getting carved. Let's get into it. Hey, a little note from uh, future me. I uh, thought I'd put this at the beginning of the video. I mentioned that I use a knife in the video, and that is the tool I use most. But I also use a few other tools, and so you don't need them. Um, but uh, it makes life a lot easier. So those tools are as follows. Um, sandpaper, a little riffler. It's like a little file. A file would probably work as well, but this is like got diamond grit on it. And uh, a couple of gouges. So this is a three millimeter and this is a two millimeter veiner. All right. And uh, I also use a little Dremel uh, or a, it's actually an angle grinder with a quarter uh, inch shaft um, die grinder, uh, a bit, cuts all bit. So anyway, that's how I kind of make quicker work of this uh, little kind of rock holder or um, manger. What is it? Uh, feeding trough. Anyway, that being said, uh, let's get into it. All right, so we've got a deep holler knife. This is an inch and a half uh, blade right in between a detail and a rough out knife. I also have a two inch by three and a quarter inch by about a uh, one and a quarter inch thick piece of uh, butternut here. And uh, of course my measuring ruler here and my uh, strop to keep things nice and sharp. And uh, the uh, first thing I wanted to say quickly is the way I got the proportion for this in case you're making a manger uh, or something like this for some reason um, worked out so that the uh, baby is about a quarter of the length of an adult. So. Since the statue that I'm working with is about uh, 12 inches, a uh, quarter of 12, of course, is three. So uh, this is where I'm getting the length from. And I added just about a quarter of an inch for the swaddling cloth because uh, everyone knows that baby Jesus was wrapped in swaddling cloth. So I've got a really rough outline here of the design. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to try and do is just pare this thing down. Um, I'm a little bit thick. I'm an inch and a quarter. I might end up just taking this to the... Uh, um, table saw and bring bring it right down or um, not necessarily table saw it doesn't matter but bring it right down to the uh, one inch mark because again it's at about one and a quarter eh, it's a little thick let's do that now okay so I did cut this an inch thinner and so now we're at uh, not an inch thinner <laughs> I cut it down to an inch of thickness. So uh, now I'm just going to start to uh, narrow it out a bit. I uh, get this closer to the uh, final size. Okay, I'm going to start by just getting this thing uh, a bit narrower and uh, kind of create a little bit of width where the arms are. So that's going to be in this area and then it narrows at the waist and then widens again a little bit at the feet. So that's going to kind of uh, come in here and here. Okay. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, if you uh, aren't wearing a glove, I'm going to steal from the words of Doug Linker. He says, uh, do as I say, not as I do. And I do believe that it is important that you wear a glove just because, uh, you know, even if you're a more advanced carver, 
there's a chance you can slip and that could end you up in the ER. So uh, anyway, that being said, you uh, you shouldn't chance it. The only reason I'm chancing it is because uh, I just am. So I've just been doing this for 16 years and uh, you know I tend to have pretty decent control of the blade for the most part. Not saying I haven't cut myself, but uh, I had a pretty good track record. So I do maintain um, uh, a, a real close eye to uh, make sure I'm not, uh, what I'm trying to say is I make safe cuts, right? So I'm very careful. And we've got a little scratch in this blade, so I'm gonna do a little bit more stropping on it. And this is the strop. Say hello to the strop. Uh, I'm gonna put a little micro bevel by hiking the angle up. Let's see if I can get this focused. Hiking the angle up just a tiny bit for a couple of the passes. That's gonna create a secondary little bevel that's a little more durable. And I just barely touched that maybe five, four or five times. And then the rest of it is gonna be flat against the strop, like so. I'll just run this a few times. And you can use a power strop for this. I have been kind of liking the hand strop lately just because it's, I don't know, a more tactile thing. It's almost like a, the difference between power carving and hand carving. It's like, it's kind of nice to be in touch with the process a little bit. So let's see if I help that at all. Yeah, it looks like those lines are a little less prominent. They're still there though. So I may need to take this to the polisher. Let's do that. All right, that's a lot better. There's still a couple of really faint little scratches in there, but uh, it's pretty dang good now, so I'm not gonna worry about it as much. Okay, a nice little trick to, to mention here is when you're cutting into a square block, it's a lot of work to cut into the side of it like this. So one thing you can do is come at the corner, and reduce the corner, and come to the other side, and reduce that corner. All right, and then split the difference. Okay, and in doing so, you're moving a little less material and you're just kind of making your way down the piece of wood like that. All right. So again, notice a little bit wider here at the shoulders, narrower top at the head. Like so. And this is butternut. And a lot of times with butternut, you have these butternut uh, canker trails that are left behind. At least that's what I think they are. These little holes. Um, and uh, it does affect the uh, finished product, but luckily there's not a whole lot going on here. Some people actually like the look of the butternut canker. I'm not sure I agree with that, but uh, I don't mind it. I've, like, I've put up with the imperfections. Sometimes it adds character. All right, so you never know what you're gonna run into regarding that. Okay, so just taking off the flat corners, like so. So I might be moving a little faster than some of you. So just take your time. Okay. I'm just taking out the flat spots here. And uh, narrowing this up just a little bit more. In fact, I may have cut this a little too wide on the two inch mark. I might, might go an inch and a half on this. Uh, might be the best uh, rough out size. So I'll just cut it down, Let's see where we're at now. Yeah, close to an inch and a half. Yeah, or even at parts, yeah. Might widen up to inch and five eighths. But uh, inch and a half is plenty wide. Taking the corners off of the wood here. All right. I'm going to keep doing that and I'll uh, come back in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to mark uh, about an inch from the top of the piece. It's going to be about the bottom of the head. Right? And uh, I'm going to come across that like so. And uh, of course, baby Jesus is going to have swaddling cloth. So I'll kind of have him peeking out from this wrapping, keeping him warm. Right? So I'll have the swaddling cloth come back around almost mummy. <laughs> Almost mummified, and I guess that's ultimately what we're trying to avoid is making it look too much like a mummy. And so, I'm keep taking these square corners off, and I can actually come in and uh, cut the boundary of the collar of the kind of wrap of the shirt. Like so, and also kind of define the bottom of the head down here at the inch mark. 
here at the transition. The meeting point of these two uh, pieces of the shirt. So, Too much of this uh, little wormwood here. All right. Okay, so I'm just kind of rounding that head over. Again, this is an inch tall. And uh, got the swaddling cloth wrapping around, down underneath the arm. Like so. here. Have the base where his feet are. Okay. Come in here, uh, let's say about an inch and a half from the top of the head, and just take a little scoop out along the side, like so. Where the swaddling cloth wraps around and gets kind of tight around the arms and comes down into the abdomen. Okay, like so.
Okay, so this little leg is gonna come up here. So about a, yeah, an inch and a quarter from the top, from the bottom. So I'll narrow. Arms are going to be wider again, and the feet are going to be a little bit wider. And there's going to be a little separation here underneath where the feet are. Like so. So we've still got a bit of squareness here at the base, and I'm going to uh, take that out and just narrow the feet just a tiny bit. Okay, that's looking better. I'm going to uh, set the head back just a little bit because it's at this point that uh, the head looks a little big and round for the butt, for the cushion or for the wrap that he's in. So I'm going to push his head down, make it a little bit smaller. Make it look like these cloths are kind of enveloping him. And uh, he'll be sitting in a little manger, so not the end of the world if uh, he's a little thin, right? Because the uh, manger can help hide that. All right, so uh, I'm gonna shorten this up a little. It looks a little long. Yeah, so we're actually a little long. We're closer to three and a half on that. Let me shorten it up a bit. Just looking a little long. And you could use a saw for this, but uh, knife works well too. Just takes a little more time. All right, that's looking a little look at a little more proportional. Good stuff, all right. Okay, set that down, see how it looks. Looks a little bit more like a Virgin Mary. <laughs> following the same angle as this part here. 
Just want to make these cloths look a little more clothy and grooved. Wrapping around. Just make him look like he's wrapped. All right, so our head is uh, about an inch again from the top. I'm gonna actually take just a little bit of material away from the top of the head here. Let me just shrink up the head a little bit. Set it in those sheets. Okay, just shrinking that little baby head up. Screen a little bit of a hollow at the top of the baby's head where the blanket wraps around. thinking this might be a little bit too bulky in general, a little too long, a little too um, wide in some spots, so I'm going to take this down just a little bit. In fact, I may even just take it to the saw to save some time and uh, bring this closer to the three inch mark. I wanted to give a little extra room for the uh, blankets, but I think I got a little carried away, so I'm going to take uh, oh, about a quarter of an inch off. Soft. Big... All right, that's looking a little better, and uh, I can take the square edge off of this. All right. So 
satisfying sounds of wood carving. You can't deny that there's something about that sound. Okay. I'd like to introduce a new tool. This is uh, something I didn't necessarily plan on using, but would make our life a lot easier. This is a vayner. This is a three millimeter uh, vayner. This is a number 11, which means that the uh, side walls are pretty tall. I don't know if it's going to be easy to see here, but you can see that little curve to it. So I'm just going to use this to uh, create some little grooves. We really want to give this uh, the look of kind of a folded piece of fabric, and the vayner is going to help us do that. So, okay, same thing over here, wrapping around. around the baby. Okay, so notice I am carving towards my hand here with the gouge, but look at my finger. See how my finger is really extended? And so if I slip, I'm not going into my hand. My finger is there as a guard. So this is one way you can protect yourself from cuts. And you could also grab a larger gouge or use your knife as a scoop here. The scooping motion, notice I'm turning the handle as I'm moving it through the wood. In this case, going with the grain. Okay, make the little scoop cuts, but you could very well, as I was just saying, use a, uh, a shallow gouge for this.
here. And then all these up a little bit as they come together. Looking, looking better, looking a little more baby-like. I'm going to make this a little tighter around the uh, middle section here. I talked about that earlier. Just want to make sure it narrows in between the legs and arms. This is a good opportunity to get some grooves here in this tight area, wrapping around the waist of the baby. We'll get some V cuts in there. Just wanted to be chill, bro. Okay, so now we're going to uh, worry about the face of this baby. We got the wrap pretty tight around the center there. We might be able to take a little bit more from in here um, later. I'm not going to worry too much about it now. I can just take this out in here. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Baby face time. All right, so we're gonna have the eyes centered on their, on his head rather. The nose is not gonna be very far down from that. Now, typically we'd split this distance from the chin and make that the nose line, but because uh, we're, it's not quite that way, I'm gonna break this into thirds, and the nose is gonna be in this upper third. So I'm gonna take my gouge, come across the bottom of the nose like so. And I'm also going to uh, go over that line with my gouge. This is that three millimeter veiner still, like so. Okay, it's gone on either side. I'm gonna use the side wall of that gouge to bring down material on either side here. All this area. the nose to project a little. So I'll bring the forehead down. Like so. A little groove here for the forehead. And here.
rounding the forehead, getting that nose to come out. And I'll open up the mouth. I'm gonna go uh, about halfway in between the nose and the chin here. Okay, one important thing to remember is uh, have a picture nearby. See, I'm actually looking at a side view of the baby here. And so that's helping me make sure things aren't too out of whack here. up a little.
on the hairline. His cheeks. Fine. lip like so All right big is getting set in there Alright, so the uh, shapes are looking pretty good with the baby's face. I just have to smooth things out a little bit and uh, detail the nose, narrow the tip of the nose a little bit more. I'm going to come in with my veiner along the side of the nose. Take this little uh, veiner, a little bit smaller veiner. It's like a two millimeter. And just come in the corner, inside corner of the eyes, like so. And again, I'm just referencing my picture. That's how I'm getting, you know, an idea of what things are supposed to look like. Get the fills trim in there. It's not perfect yet, but uh, just be patient. Actually, <laughs> won't ever be perfect, so if you're waiting for that, then uh, maybe give up on it now and just get it 
to a happy place. Okay, so we can get a little sandpaper in there and see how everything looks shape-wise. Just take a little bit more from the nose. Okay, we'll take a little bit of uh, 220 grit sandpaper, wrap it up into a little uh, cone shape, and gently go over the face because I'm pretty close to the shapes that I want, but I just want to uh, soften everything because it looks a little bit like uh, a little bit rough and <laughs> like Benjamin Button, as Kenny, my brother, says. Soften it up and make it look nice. Just fold it up in a little triangle, that'll work as well. And just going over the whole thing. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to this because it looks like under his uh, little um, chin there's a little wormhole and it's taking, it's subtracting. Let me see if I can see that little worm. Well, it's subtracting a little bit from the baby's face. Okay, so I added just a drop of super glue. And now I'm going to uh, lightly sand and just try and get the super glue off of the extremities where it doesn't belong. And just hope that kind of fills in the gap there. In there, spray it with the accelerant, just carve off any excess. Now, I wouldn't always 
serious try this, but uh, when we got wormholes, we got to do our best to try and keep things together. <sighs> okay, so mm, that'll be in good shape, I think. Back to a little piece of sandpaper. Kind of blend these cuts in. Alright, so there's that. Baby's face, pretty close. Do a little sanding on the wrap as well. And uh, we're pretty close to being done with the baby. And since it is fabric, it's uh, not a bad idea to sand this piece. I know it's not the usual thing for us to worry about sanding, but uh, again, it's, uh, it is a piece of fabric, so it's going to be generally fairly smooth. That wrinkles aside, so kind of uh, keep those wrinkles intact by folding up the sandpaper. 
So I'm just gonna do that here, take the hard edges off, kind of smooth out the shapes, blend them, and we'll be right back. Another quick and kind of fun tip is uh, to use a riffler. This is a diamond grit uh, riffler, or I guess could just be considered a file. I'm not sure exactly what they call these things. I'm pretty sure it's a diamond riffler. But uh, anyway, you can use that to make more refined shapes and details. Uh, that can be a really handy tool, especially on such a small piece like this, where a little tiny material removed makes a big difference. All right. This is kind of the tool I'm using to clean things up, soften everything, get everything looking nice and baby soft. All right. Okay, so we are going to make a feeding trough for this little guy, and uh, interestingly enough, I started looking into what feeding troughs uh, looked like in ancient Israel, because I imagine they didn't look like the crisscross applesauce uh, crap that we see in the uh, regular kind of um, mangers, but it uh, turns out they were just these black um, kind of rectangles. So we're gonna make a kind of rough looking black rectangle that will fit this guy. And uh, yeah, that's that. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, make this a little bit less uniform, cut out an interior part. And to do that, I'm actually going to use a, uh, a gouge. I could also just uh, power carve this. That would be the easier way of going. I'm um, just sticking a, a ball burr in there. In fact, uh, we could just bring this outside and do that. What do you think? Huh? Let's do that. Let's do that. All right, so since I don't want to have to deal with the clamp being in the way of this tiny block, I'm going to glue it to another block and then clamp this block to the table. So put a few glue dots here and there, enough to where it'll hold it. And then I'll let it sit down. Try and get some accelerator in there so I don't have to wait so long. Because apparently super glue is not fast enough already for my impatient self. Just barely the right size. Okay, and then I'm gonna get my uh, grinder out. Do some magic. Thank you. 
Okay, it's getting really messy here, but um, I'm just taking uh, little bits of of uh, butternut, little string pieces, and making hay out of it. I'm trying to use the corners to keep it nice and thin. See, that's too thick. And uh, just adding them all to my uh, little manger. Like that. Kind of works. I could also just use a little uh, gouge. In fact, this might be a better way. Well, it curls a little bit. Well, and I'm not trying to necessarily have curly hay, although that eh, kind of works. Stick with the knife strategy. Oh, no, look at that, that's curling. If it's too thin, it does curl. sits in there, covered by wood shavings, and there's the little, cute little manger. Anyway, I'm going to keep working on this, but uh, that's all for now. I hope that you enjoyed. I know it's out of season, and it's a little odd, but maybe you can get your Christmas decorations done early. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to use just a little touch of super glue at the base and then I'm going to attach these pieces to that little string of glue. Maybe do another layer or two to build up the pieces so they don't fall out. And then glue baby Jesus in as well. But uh, that's the idea. Thanks again, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. If you want to learn more about carving faces, um, check out the online school. Uh, here, there's a little description there. You can check out uh, the programs I have available now. And uh, it's a uh, 77 uh, plus videos, project videos, mostly surrounding the human face, but uh, multiple other types of projects. So check that out. All right. See you guys in the next one.